All right, welcome back to another Art of War 3 replay. I'm your host, John Cena, and today we're going to be doing a clan 2v2 battle. I'm going to be the blue player, and my ally, Skin and Bones, is going to be the green player. So let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to be facing off against two resistance players, and uh, just for the audience to note here, uh, these two resistance players are medalists. Between the two of them, they have a combined total of 14 medals. For reference, between Skin and Bones and I, we have a combined total of zero medals. So we are anticipating a tough matchup here. Let's go ahead and get into it. So we got some early scouting happening around the battlefield. Uh, and we can see that the resistance players are doing a good job of fighting for the early game containers. We can see Skin and Bones sending a couple of salts and a fortress to try and capture that large resource container in the center. So, so far, uh, looks like Skin and Bones has control. Meanwhile, on my end, I'm trying to drop down a bunker for uh, defense to keep scouts out, but it wasn't successful, and the red player was able to get some riflemen into my base. Uh, but we can see here now a couple of dragonflies coming in for the resistance side, and it looks like they're actually going to be able to clean up uh, Skin and Bones forces here, so Skin and Bones is going to lose control of the large container. So, I tell Skin and Bones that we need to scout both the red and yellow players. We don't quite know yet what they're going to be up to, so uh, it's going to be important for us to just get an idea of whether we're going to be rushed or if we need to prepare for a large ground offensive. So Skin and Bones now continuing to just put some more infrastructure down. I'm continuing to build infrastructure as well on my end. And we can see that now we're getting to scout onto the yellow player's base. We can see that the yellow player is HQ3, has five supply centers and some good infrastructure. So we can tell that these players know what they're doing. I'm getting some good infrastructure down. You can see here that I have seven supply centers. Skin and Bones is currently at five supply centers. He's a tad slower on the base development than I am. Meanwhile, we got some more scouting that's happening, some light engagements occurring. I've got a cyclone coming into the red player's base. Let's see what red's up to. And it looks like red's going for the fast HQ4 build. Has eight supply centers and some good solid infrastructure. Based on the build, it looks like the red player is going for a mass ground army. So my cyclone's coming in again. We're gonna get another scout on the yellow player's base. So we can see yellow is still HQ3. Uh, no major builds yet, so we're not quite sure yet what the yellow player is going to go for. So on my end, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tech up to HQ4 so we can see that my uh, HQ is being upgraded. And in the meantime, I'm going to start to produce a ground army. So my plan for this particular engagement is that I'm going to go for a mass hammer and fire assault army, and I'm going to mix in some heavy assaults for dragonflies is needed. You can see I've got a couple infantry and a Zeus tank out just for some light engagement. Here comes some uh, riflemen and a dragonfly from the resistance players. And we can see now more dragonflies and grenadiers are starting to pour in now and I do not have the ground troops to combat this. And in this moment I've realized that I've severely underestimated the firepower that is coming from the resistance side. So I'm gonna lose all these ground troops and I'm gonna lose that large container as well. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and just focus on building a ground army, but this is not looking good so far. We're anticipating again, a tough battle here. So just continuing to put scouts around the map just so we can maintain that visual control over the battlefield here. And we can see that now I'm going into triple hammer production and getting some infantry to support. I'm also gonna include a couple typhoons in there just in case to get some anti-air if there's any hawks that come our way. Skin and Bones now teching up. We can see Skin and Bones has gone for a uh, 7 supply center build as well. We see some containers getting uh, acquired by the yellow player, so that's some extra resources for them to use for base development or for production of their army. I'm putting down a little bit of more infrastructure as well, but for the most part, I'm just continuing to produce my ground army. Uh, and again, we can see that I've got some hammers and infantry out. I'm going to use my cyclone now to come over here. We're going to scout the red player. Let's see what red's up to. And we can see that red is HQ4. Has a couple dragonflies out. But we can see that there's a couple tier 3 factories out there. So I'm expecting some kind of jaguar 
Porcupine Chameleon Army, potentially. We get scouted there by a Dragonfly, and we see some infantry moving from the Yellow player. And I'm just moving my units around just in case. I want to see what the uh, Resistance players are up to. They might try and attack us soon here, so we need to be prepared for that. And there we go. We got a big attack force moving in from the Yellow player. Looks like they're uh, gathering their forces before they launch an assault onto Skin and Bones. And we can see that Skin and Bones is preparing some anti-air towers for defense. Here comes the yellow player launching an attack with dragonflies. Here comes the red player as well. We got some dragonflies, infantry, and a porcupine moving in. And now this is a coordinated attack from the red and yellow player. And we can see there's a chameleon army moving in from the red player. I'm going to go ahead and throw on a gold attack boost here. And I'm going to do a double attack here where I do an attack move with my infantry and I'm going to move my hammers through the chameleon box. We can see there's some lag that's happening there uh, just because of the amount of action that's going on here. And we can see that my infantry and hammers are continuing to put down damage here and my army has done a great job with cleaning up that assault force from the red player. Meanwhile, Skin and Bones is also doing a great job countering the red player's army and Looks like Red's, uh, excuse me, Yellow's army is pretty much finished off here, so I'm going to move my ground troops over uh, to assist uh, Skin and Bones. And now I'm going to let Skin and Bones know that we should actually try to press an attack onto the Yellow player. Uh, potentially, we can see what kind of damage we can do since both of their attacks uh, were not successful. So now we're going to be moving across the map here. We've got a ton of infantry here and hammer tanks mis mixed in here. So uh, we can see there's a couple of dragonflies put down some fire, but we've got plenty of heavy assaults to counter. There's no problem for us at all. And here we go. Let's see what the yellow players got lined up for us. We see a chameleon fog and a couple defensive buildings here, but this is not going to be enough, I think. Uh, so this might be a big move for us. Let's see how it plays out. Red's coming in with reinforcements here, and I'm trying to move my hammers into the base, trying to keep them moving as we attack here, while the infantry kind of dish out damage at the front, but uh, we can see surprisingly here, our army is actually losing steam pretty quickly, there's a fair amount of snipers mixed in uh, with the grenadiers and the heavy vehicles, so our uh, heavy assaults are holding out for now but I don't think it's going to be enough for us to push a full assault to take down the yellow player's base and our counterattack is not going to be successful. So right now we're just rebuilding our ground armies now. I'm going for the same composition of hammers, heavy assaults, and fire assaults. It seemed to have worked out really well this past time so I'm going to go ahead and give that a go again. And so we, we can see here I'm about a little over half my command points at this point. Um, again, I'm radically producing cyclones just so I can maintain visual control over the battlefield. Skin and Bones also has a cyclone over one of the uh, cliff tops there so that he's got visual control on his end as well. And it looks like we got a nice scout on the red player. We can see the red player has actually gone for HQ5. So uh, again, looks like uh, with that scout from the Cyclone, uh, the red player is probably going for an HQ-5 full army of some kind, so we need to be careful of that. Looks like Skin and Bones is going to go ahead and tech up. Uh, at some point, I'm going to need to tech up the HQ-5 as well, most likely, so that's just something I'm keeping in the back of my mind as I rebuild my ground army. So, Dragonfly coming in gonna push my cyclone off the uh, plateau there my cyclone is nowhere near strong enough to take on that dragonfly so I want to keep that uh, cyclone alive as needed I'm gonna move a couple hammers through the uh, center area here actually moving most of my main ground army I'm gonna go ahead and pull it back though looks like the red player's got a defensive flying setup with uh, jaguars and mammoths so I don't want to get too close quite yet uh, we can see that now I'm teching up to HQ5 just so I can get those extra command points. I'm pretty much full at HQ4. Uh, we can see that Skin and Bones is actually putting down a space system. This is going to come in handy. Uh, potentially if this battle drags on and turns into a siege. So 
Uh, most likely, Skin and Bones is probably going to have better upgrades on his space system than mine, so we can see now Skin and Bones is preparing a space system to launch at the Resistance players. Meanwhile, at my end, I've uh, upgraded fully to HQ5. Skin and Bones now has a ground army at the top of the map here and is going to make a push onto this red player here. Red is grabbing the resources from those containers. Skin is launching an attack here to put some pressure. Let's see what kind of damage Skin and Bones can do. Oh, uh, looks like we got Hawks coming in from the yellow player. Those Hawks are dishing out some good damage against Skin and Bones' army. So Skin and Bones is actually going to move an army across the top of the map here towards the red player's base. Meanwhile, uh, with my army, still keeping it at my base for now. I don't want to go too far yet because of those Hawks. Those Hawks could dish out some good damage. And here comes the red army coming in with Jaguars, Pokemines, Mammoths, and Chameleons. This is a pretty big heavy armor uh, group here. But I'm going to go ahead and move in my Hammers, Fire Assaults, and Heavy Assaults and look at the damage that they're doing to this JCP group. The JCP group gets absolutely shredded. Meanwhile, uh, Skin and Bones' army has been pretty much demolished at this point, and we can see that the red player has a nuclear missile silo down, but Skin and Bones is gonna go ahead and lock down the space system. Uh, we got about uh, 10 seconds or so before the space system hits, so I'm gonna launch my attack and hit the front of the base here. Space system's gonna go up, and the strike comes down, and the red player's base just gets demolished. And now I'm moving in my ground army. This is a big attack that we're moving on to the red player's base. Hawks are coming in from the yellow player to try and defend as much as possible. But this red player is in trouble. We can see that there's infrastructure still from the red player uh, that's in place to just support. Uh, I'm trying to move my hammers towards the back of the base just to see if we can take down that headquarters. If we can finish the headquarters, that's gonna be a big move uh, for us. So now, just keeping those hammers moving, trying to minimize as much damage as possible from uh, Dragonflies and Aviation. And the headquarters is gonna go down. This is a big bonus for us here. And my hammers are just continuing to dish out damage, but those Hawks are back. And those Hawks are taking out so many hammers. I'm gonna take out another special vehicle factory, and that's gonna be at the end of my assault there. So it looks like the red player is now left over with just a handful of infrastructure. They're probably going to be able to rebuild decently quickly though with a reserve HQ boost and a reconstruction boost. But for now, uh, Skin and Bones and I have the upper hand here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and rebuild our respective ground armies. So uh, given how the battle is unfolding so far, I think that uh, my ground army composition of choice has been working out. However, uh, here come some Hawks, and they're dishing out some good damage on the space system, and the space system is gonna go down, but those Hawks are taking some good damage, and those Hawks are gonna go ahead and retreat here. So, uh, luckily, uh, Skin and Bones, I think, has the resources to rebuild the space system, and he wasn't in production of the space system. We can see now, uh, another space system being constructed by Skin and Bones. So, uh, knowing that the yellow player has Hawks, we need to see if we can scout out the location of the Hawks. And here we go, we got some uh, forces here in the center of the map. Uh, looks like Chameleons, Infantry, and Jaguars trying to defend the large container. But we're gonna push a huge ground army through the center of the map here. And Let's see what kind of damage we can do here. Hawks are coming in from the yellow player to dish out damage, but this is so much infantry, so many tanks, and it looks like yellow's losing the fight here for the center of the map here. Those Hawks are desperately trying to dish out damage, but it's not enough. Those ground troops from the yellow player are gonna get cleaned up, and those Hawks are taking some good damage from the anti-air towers and typhoons from Skin and Bone. Meanwhile, Red's moving in, to take control of the resource container there. So I'm trying to produce more ground troops to defend my base uh, while I send a good portion of my ground army over. We're gonna launch another assault onto the yellow player's base. Now, the key with my assault here is that I don't think it's gonna be enough to finish the yellow player off, but I'm okay with that. The main thing I'm trying to do is get the Hawks to use their fuel to defend against the attack. 
and hopefully Skin and Bones can prepare another space system to strike the yellow player. We can see that yellow is now also HQ5 and is going for a mass deviation build. We see multiple airfields and three avia factories. So it's a prime setup for the yellow player to go for the mass uh, hawks there. So again, we need to do something about that. We don't want them to have that air supremacy. Uh, so we can see here, I'm trying to get send some units to capture those resources, uh, but I don't think it's going to work out uh, as we hope. Here we go, second space system strike coming in for Skin and Bones. Space system strike's going to go up, and the space strike comes down, levels a huge portion of the yellow player's base. Two Avia factories and a ton of airfields lost. That is a major hit onto the yellow player's base. So. Now we're just continuing to produce ground troops uh, just to rebuild our armies. Here comes the red player though. Red is back in the game, this time going for a very heavy infantry build. Looks like we got riflemen and grenadiers from the red player. I've got a rocket tower and a couple bunkers at the side of my base. I know this is not going to be enough. I need to get more forces to the side of my base there. Skin and bones now making a push up the center here. I'm going to drop some walls down just to serve as a meat shield for these uh, infantry. In the meantime, I'm going to start producing some cyclones and I'm going to try to move my ground army in to help with defending. I don't expect those defensive buildings to hold. My defensive buildings have been cleaned up at this point. Meanwhile, Skin and Bones is putting pressure onto the yellow player's base. We can see there's multiple sniper towers and good infrastructure from the uh, yellow player. Meanwhile, on my end, uh, looks like these Grenadiers are desperately trying to finish off my units here. Uh, I've got a mix of hammers, fire assaults, and heavy assaults here. But uh, the hammers are not doing a good job. Hammers are not great against Grenadiers. They're more so there for the meat shield aspect. So that my fire assaults, when they're mixed in, can try to dish out damage. As well as my cyclones. I don't have any fire assaults left at this point. Uh, actually, we got a few fire assaults. It's not enough though. Um, but we're doing a good job cleaning up these Grenadiers. Looks like we're going to be able to finish off these last few Grenadiers. And we're actually going to be able to push the infantry off the plateau here. So I've got uh, four Cyclones and a handful of Hammers here. Let's see what kind of push we can do to uh, push the Red Player back. I don't think this is going to be enough at all to uh, take out the Red Player. But again, it's just nice for us to be able to put some pressure on them and keep the upper hand. So. Cyclones are continuing to just pursue these infantry, and Red is on full retreat mode. Red is in trouble here. Trying to pull off the tactical retreat, not quite working out well. And my Cyclones are now getting a scout onto the Red players. Let's see what Red's got. Looks like Red was able to rebuild to a uh, tier 3 HQ. And we got Hawks coming in from the Yellow player. Looks like Yellow's got some uh, air supremacy in the area. I'm gonna have to retreat. I don't have the ground forces to make a full push onto the red player at this time. And um, looks like I'm taking some casualties and damage here from those Hawks. Uh, looks like I have some ground troops in the front here. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull those ground troops back. Again, I don't have the firepower to punch through at this time. I'm going to need a bigger ground army and some air support uh, just to deny those Hawks. So. Uh, we're still doing okay so far, uh, just trying to continue to put pressure and produce units here. Um, still keeping my same primary ground army composition. We've got uh, hammers, cyclones, fire assaults. I'm uh, going to go ahead and use a gold common attack boost here. Infantry are trying to move in from the red player to take this large resource container. Uh, and again, I'm keeping my ground army here, trying to maneuver my hammers here. I just want to keep Red's attention off of my ally, and I also want to see if I can draw the Hawks in. We got Hawks coming in from the yellow player, and they're dishing out some good damage against my hammers. Not looking good for my ground troops. I just need to see if I can capture a resource container here or two. Uh, it's going to be tough though. Those Grenadiers are dishing out so much damage against my hammers though, and those Hawks are dishing out a ton of damage as well. And I'm actually going to go ahead and pull back my ground troops here. This is not enough to defend. Here comes Skin and Bones though. Skin and Bones has a massive hammer and infantry ground army moving in through the bottom of the map. Yeah, it looks like that red player is going to go ahead and retreat. Hawks now coming in from the yellow player to try and defend. 
this assault. Let's see what kind of damage uh, skin and bones can do. Hawks are now continuing to put fire onto the infantry. Skin and bones is taking some heavy casualties here. Uh, but he is able to get to part of the yellow player's base. We can see that yellow was able to rebuild some of the infrastructure and airfields from the original uh, space strike. So uh, let's see if these infantry supported by the shield can do any kind of damage whatsoever. Uh, we got some uh, infra infrastructure being hit. We see another space system uh, being prepared. So uh, I think right now at this point, that uh, space strike is going to be the piece that's going to dish out the damage rather than these infantry. These infantry are just to keep the Hawks occupied. Skin and Bow is trying to do some damage. He's cleaned up a couple buildings so far, which is good news. Uh, but again, uh, the rate at which these Hawks are finishing off the infantry, uh, this infantry will not be enough to finish off the yellow player. So meanwhile, I got a cyclone over the cliff. Trying to see what the red player is up to. Red is continuing to go for the mass infantry build. Uh, meanwhile, Skin and Bones still trying to dish out damage against the yellow player, but his infantry are cleaned up by those hawks. So, uh, we've lost visual control over the battlefield around the yellow player's base, uh, but that's okay. We're just continuing to rebuild our ground army again. Again, doing hammers and infantry mixed together. Uh, it's been working out in the battle so far, so we're gonna keep the mix going. We can see that there's some defensive buildings being uh, set up from the red player. Meanwhile, Skin and Bones is gonna drop another space strike onto the resistance player. The strike's gonna go up and it's gonna come down and it's gonna demolish a ton of the yellow player's base. Yellow is once again put under some heavy pressure here. Yellow is running out of uh, structures to put down and units to build. Here we go now, Grenadiers. Infantry and Porcupine moving in from the red player. I'm gonna go ahead and move my ground army through though. My fire assaults are dishing out a ton of damage though and just absolutely demolish those Grenadiers. This ground army is no problem for me at all. Now I'm gonna move in my ground army. Let's see what kind of damage we can do here. Hammer is moving in uh, to dish out damage against those uh, defensive buildings. That's a lot of gun towers though and sniper towers from the red player. I got a lot of ground troops here though. Looks like Red doesn't have that many troops to defend with, so Red's in trouble here. I punched through the front line of the Red player's base and now I'm inside the Red player's base. My goal here now is just to dish out as much damage as possible. Again, we have the upper hand here, so even if my assault is not successful, uh, we still get that activity advantage. And we can see that now Hammer is just all over the Red player's base. Trying to dish out some good damage here, but uh, my hammers are not dishing out as much damage as I would like. These buildings are surprisingly tanky. Uh, I'm also starting to lose my heavy assaults and fire assaults. Meanwhile, uh, we got some infantry coming in from the side of my base here. I've only got a bunker here, but Skin and Bones is thankfully able to cover me with his ground army, which is good news for us. Meanwhile, we got uh, reinforcements pouring in from the yellow player's uh, base here. Skin and Bones is cleaning up the rest of this assault here. Uh, nice coverage there from Skin and Bones. My hammers are still trying to dish out damage against the infrastructure and buildings of the red player. Uh, Red's trying to produce grenadiers to defend with. I'm trying to take out as many buildings as I can. I got some reinforcements moving in, some fire assaults and some hammers. I'm trying to see if I can finish off these grenadiers and snipers coming in from the yellow player. Uh, looks like there's a couple avia factories coming in from the red player. Red's trying to produce some dragonflies. Uh, one thing I would have changed in this particular battle if I were to redo it was to actually concentrate my hammers onto those avia factories. Had I done that earlier, instead of continuing to maneuver my hammers around the base to dish out damage all around, uh, we could have prevented the production of dragonflies and potentially pressed the assault a little bit longer. Uh, but here we go, moving my hammers away from the avia factories instead and I'm trying to join up now with my uh, remaining ground troops and Skin and Bones is now also moving a ground army in, consisting of a lot of infantry here. We're gonna finish off a gun tower there, uh, but we can see that I'm actually running out of steam here. I don't have that many ground troops left here, so it's gonna be hard for us to finish off the red player with uh, what we have left. 
Dragonflies and Grenadier is now coming in for the red player. It's getting increasingly difficult for us to sustain this assault. And it looks like a lot of skin and bones. This brown army has been cleaned up. Uh, my forces are getting cleaned up here as well. And uh, I would say overall, this attack was not that great. We were able to dish out some damage. Uh, but I think overall there's a lot of infrastructure still intact for the red player and so the assault wasn't as good as we hoped. So I'm gonna go ahead and retreat now. And here we go, another space strike from Skin and Bones is being prepared and is going to hit the yellow player pretty soon here to finish off the rest of the infrastructure from the yellow player. Space strike is gonna go up and it's gonna level the base from the yellow player. That is a huge hit again on the yellow player. Yellow is truly running out of options at this point in terms of trying to support their ally. Big Infantry Army coming together now from Skin and Bone. And Skin and Bone is going to be engaging these infantry from the Yellow player. We got a lot of Grenadiers facing up against a lot of uh, heavy assaults here and fire assaults mixed together. And it looks like Skin and Bone has a shield generator in the mix as well to support. Meanwhile, on my end, I'm trying to produce hammers, heavy assaults, and fire assaults. I'm going to send a cyclone to scout the yellow player as well. Looks like yellow's got a ton of barracks, uh, a power plant, and four supply centers. So they still got some good infrastructure, but at the same time, uh, yellow is getting pretty desperate at this point. They're just trying to sustain an army of any kind at this point. My army is coming in now, and we're just fighting it out with the red player. Skin and Bones is trying to fight it out with the yellow player. Yellow is going to win control of that uh, container, but uh, Skin and Bones has another space strike on the way now, which is going to be good for us. And at this point, we just need to continue to defend the space system as much as possible, just so we can get that space strike out. Uh, infantry army coming in from skin trying to get control of that container again it's going to be fire assault and heavy assault versus grenadiers and snipers and it looks like it's going to be a tough battle for skin i don't think skin's going to be quite successful alone so i'm going to go ahead now and i'm going to move in my ground army so i got hammers and fire assaults coming in this is going to turn the tide of battle within this center area and now yellow's in trouble yellow has lost control of the center and all yellow has is infantry to fight with and infantry by themselves are no match for fire assaults so i've got a lot of hammers and infantry moving in now let's see what kind of damage we can do we're gonna push the yellow player back here and it looks like yellow is on the run here so we're gonna launch our attack here we're gonna start now but skin and bones is gonna flag portion of my base tells me that i need to defend that here comes the red player though. This is another push from the red player. We see dragonflies and infantry coming in. And I realize here that I need to come back and defend. I do not have any ground troops at my base right now. And I don't want us to make a mistake at this stage and lose. Skin and Bones is going to plant down the space system uh, targeting. And it's gonna launch another space strike soon. So again, we gotta keep holding out here. A lot of grenadiers coming in and dragonflies. Base strike is going to go up and it levels the entire base. The headquarters goes down along with all of the production structures. There's only a handful of buildings left for yellow. But now I'm in trouble here, sort of. Uh, I got some pressure from these grenadiers. But now my main ground army has moved back in. We have cleaned up the assault force from the red player. And now we're in a good position right now. And uh, we can see here from the activity, Skin and Bones and I are both up on activity by 14%. So even if we don't finish off the red and yellow player, we can still win by activity. Both the red and yellow player know this. So yellow is making another push now with riflemen and grenadiers trying to make an attack onto Skin and Bones' base here. It's going to be bunkers and rocket towers versus infantry. Let's see how this pans out. These rocket towers and bunkers are dishing out good damage, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And Skin and Bones knows that he's going to move in some fire assaults to assist with the defense here. And it's going to be planting down some structures to help absorb damage while the fire assaults jump in there to dish out their flame damage. Meanwhile, we got one Grenadier coming in to scout out my bunker. It's going to get cleaned up. There's assault force getting cleaned up very nicely by Skin and Bones' fire assaults. 
and that is going to be the end of Yellow's attack. Meanwhile, now, I'm going to move in my ground army. I got hammers and infantry. Dragonflies are trying to move in onto my base, though. Uh, but this time I've got some forces at my base and Skin and Bones has Typhoons to back me up. Uh, well, let's see what the yellow players got. Has yellow rebuilt their base yet again? Dragonfly is trying to dish out another desperate attack onto my ground army here. Getting cleaned up by my Typhoons. Grenadier is coming in from the red player as well. Trying to dish out damage against my ground troops here. And we can see yellow has rebuilt uh, a tier 3 HQ but has absolutely no infrastructure to go with it. It's just four buildings now, and those buildings are going to get cleaned up. This ground army trying to dish out as much damage as possible against my ground forces here. Grenadiers now are on two fronts now, trying to make their last stand, but it is not going to be enough. And I'm going to go ahead now. We're going to finish off the power plant here, and that is good game for the yellow player. So these Grenadiers still trying to dish out damage against my base here, and against Skin and Bones' his troops here. But between the two of us, this is going to be too much for the Grenadiers to handle. We've got a couple fire assaults in the mix that is going to clean up those Grenadiers nicely. And now I'm going to move my ground troops up towards the red player's base here. And Skin and Bones is also going to move troops up towards the red player's base as well. And we're just cleaning up the last of the red player's uh, ground troops and helicopters while we move in on the red player's base. And this is a huge ground army and we see no defenses whatsoever. Red is going to self-destruct their headquarters, and that is pretty much good game. The rest of this video is us just cleaning up the base and skin both using his space system to launch one more strike, and that's going to be the end. All right, hope you all enjoyed this battle. We will see you in the next battle. Good luck until then. Victory.